Howdy folks, my name is David from RC Models and today I'm back with you with another kit. This is a brand new kit from Border Models. This is a Stug 3 Alpha G. It's the full interior version and you get a couple of extras with this one. Uh, you get the crew figures as well. You get a, a tank badge and stuff like that. If you want those extras, um, you might want to get this tank now before it gets released later on because they might not have the extras. Um, it is a bit of a little bit of an expensive kit because of all the stuff that comes in this one. Let's take a look at inside this kit. I do have some extras to go with this kit which I've already stuck in the box but I actually haven't had a full look at this kit yet. So let's take a look what we get inside. As I say they get a nice box art. I do like the, the, the um, design, whoever does theirs. So you do get some extras. We'll take a look at them in a minute. This is the full interior version. This is what you expect to see and how you can build it up um, kit number is BT020 these are some of the schemes you can do they are basically 1944 and 45 versions um, so you get a, a winter one one in Germany this one here and also some have the extra is it a uh, shirtson? I think they call it. This extra armor hangs that down down the side. You could do with or without. So there are some subtle differences in between the two versions. This one has the rack on the back, and you can put storage and everything. There's a couple of bits of storage in this as well. Standard opening box from Border Models. It's quite thick. Worksheet, instructions, and this is loaded with plastic. I did buy some extra shells. I did get these ones from Tamir, the brass shells, so I want to probably add these to the kit as well, but this is an extra. So no further ado, we just go straight into instructions. It'll probably be a little bit of a lengthy video than normal because of the thick of this manual and the ton of plastic we've got to go through. So again, nice picture and shows you all the details. The badge, I do know, is not real, it is a replica, so bear that in mind. I do like collecting badges and stuff. I'm not uh, worried about it being, uh, it's not a fake as such, or you could call it a fake, but it is a replica, but uh, nice internals, sprue map layer, everything is within the kit. There are a couple of brass shells that come with the kit, but um, I'm not sure what you do with them because it doesn't show them here. So... As it's the interior kit, you get straight in with your wheels. You've got some photo etch parts for your wheels and your main drive wheels. They are full length torsion bars. This is the internals, lower floor, all in the internal parts as you work your way around. Nicely done. And then we go to the back of the tank. We have the exhaust assembly stuff like that and these sections are for towing and for your chains and stuff and then this is the brake assembly the side of the tank and parts of the suspension and transmission cover I think that is and then repeating the process on the other side left and right inside the tunnels you can attach your side walls to make up the uh, lower hole a couple of internal firewall parts we have more your, your expansion you can attach the full length torsion bars being this is a uh, based on the real version and it's got four in here I imagine these will work like a proper suspension I imagine it would do you do get a full length I think it's either a gearbox or a transmission I'm not sure but this is what you go through um, there are color call outs at the end what parts need to be so Plus being an interior kit, certain parts are going to be require interior white, the um, German uh, primer colour which is that red colour and there's bits of black, bits of grey so you have to bear that in mind as you work around. There's a lot of painting and assembly, it's not a case of just building and painting like a normal, normal tank. Carry on with, the, with what I think is the gearbox and transmission, I think this is what this is. Um, this section here, I'm not actually 100% sure what we're looking at, but it is nicely done. 
Now here, I think this is an engine block what, for what I can gather and what I can see. Nicely done. I'm not sure what type of engine this is. Does it say? Is the um, A47 is complete part before step being included? So something to do with A47. Where's A47 part? That must be this bit here. I'm not sure, as I say, I'm not sure what the engine is. It, it could be a Maybach. Anyone knows, feel free to let me know what this engine is. What this engine is. But again, a couple of more detail parts. You've got your pulleys, probably a water pump and stuff, and that kind of thing. I'm not sure. Then this is looks like the uh, pedals for the driver. It gets attached here. And you work your way along. And then you're attaching your um, again I think it's the gearbox and whatever and transmission and then you've got the tunnel for it um, obviously because that's where the drive shaft will go through to the engine you don't get an actual drive shaft I don't think because because obviously because you've got the cover over the top of it so there's no point more sticks driver's seat uh, we have upper framing and it's a little bit of a floor more floor pans and internal parts of the floor Boxes and equipment, ammo rack, closed or open version, so there's two types of ammo rack. Or you can have the shells completely being used and once the shells have all been fired, the ammo rack can be folded to one side. A couple of more braces on the inside. This massive tunnel piece, again I'm not sure, could be a fuel tank. more braces we've got plumbing we have some more pulleys now we have fans at the back I think this is the back of the where the uh, engine is as well I'm positive that's a fuel tank though attaching your pulleys to your fans in goes the engine more bracing this set goes down and up, sorry, the arrow's pointing what step, you, what way you need to go. So it's this step, this way, this way, this way, and back again. Uh, what we have here, we have more plumbing. These look like radiators to me. More bracing. This looks like air filters. I think this is an air filter. More air filters, two of them. We have, I think this is the engine deck. And we have detail parts and hatches and stuff. This is all the uh, mechanism for the hatches to open. In goes, I think, again, I think this is the air filter. I'm not sure. A couple of details on the outside. Touching your road wheels and drive sprocket and idler and that kind of thing. And you've got your track assembly. Is uh, These individual colour sections is what's made as a kit. So you've got length for track. Individual links, length, 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 and these parts around here are individual links, so it's link and length track. Radio equipment. This looks like a vision port, the driver's vision port, I think, maybe. Uh, now we're working on, it's not a turret as such, but it's the upper superstructure. Um, so this is on the outside, we've got lumps and bumps. This is on the inside. And we have spare tracks again is optional how you want to do that if you want if you don't want the tracks being on there obviously they've been used it's your call how you want to do that internals so you've got a couple of uh, mg40s and extra ammo touching your radios more boxes this is more of the superstructure and casemate type section this is more radios are being attached this again, touching the back of the casemate to the front. I think this is moulded as one large piece. More structural parts. Now you've got your gun breech here. Again, as you're working your way through it, this whole kit, again, it's all painting, assembly, painting, assembly. So check your references and make sure. That, and the uh, colour, so colour call-outs are at the back. You've got your gun, 
and touching the gun breech. Looks like we have a full length barrel. I'm pretty sure there's a metal barrel in this kit as well. Now this section here is to do with the gun. We've got the seats. More of the gun. This is the gun barrel. So it looks like there's three different styles. Now this part of the gun casemate. Again there's two two styles. Just be wary of what version your tank requires. More details and levers and pulleys and stuff for your actual gun itself. Looks like an MG40. No, not MG40. MG60. It's one of the main machine guns. Commander's vision ports and hatches and couplers. Upper superstructure. There's a couple of details. More engine deck assembly. So these are the grills and covers. Fire etch grills. Spare wheels. Again, you can have them on or off. It's optional. Tools. I like to do last. This is what it will look like when it's complete. A couple of tools being attached, but again, I like to paint mine and do them towards the end. The uh, assembly of the uh, jack. Some lights. I'm not sure what that is or that. More tools and tow cables. You do get probably metal cable, but I will swap it out. I have bought metal Brady cable, so I'm going to do metal cable on all my tanks now. And what I've got for that is this stuff here. It's a uh, one milli one minute, millimeter. Yeah, one millimeter Brady cable. So it's 11 yards of it. Um, so that's more than uh, the thickness and it's quite it's not stiff but you can bend it into shapes as well it shouldn't spring back too much again tools and stuff I like to do last attaching the fenders the engine deck upper superstructure I can attach all those parts hatches open or closed this is the superstructure we have the frame around the back is optional that's just to hold storage into place so it doesn't roll off the back and stuff obviously you will tie it down with ropes and stuff internals again we have this giant piece of plumbing it could be a fuel line i'm not sure then goes the gun more detail parts superstructure of the roof side parts for those hanging armored parts i think are called shirts in again which are these again it's optional you're gonna have to glue your Attachment points being these are photo etch if you are going to put them on you can ding them and bend them and just Beat them out beat the hell out of them if you want to you don't have to attach all of them You can have some missing because I've seen vehicles With some on and some off these are the three metal shells. You do have to attach the back plate which would be the uh, Is it the primer bit where the, uh, the gun hits it and sets this shell off again? You've got three or three of them in the kit, but it doesn't show what you've got to do with them as such. So I don't know what you want to do with the shells. This is the extra bonuses. Is the uh, stowage. It's a couple of barrels, boxes, and also this piece here is a covered version of the uh, gun mantlet. So basically all of this is what you see here in red. So it's a is optional if you want to attach it. I'll probably use some of this. Mainly the ones that are covered up like this is like basically transport mode. Now here is where your crew member is going to sit and this is the, the uh, building of the figures. I believe the figures are Border Models own made figures, they're not any other manufacturer. Um, placement of their fingers and stuff it doesn't say what crew member is which, but you obviously try and work it out. So we do have a uh, gunner, commander, loader and driver. I think the, the uh, commander is a radio operator as well, if I'm not mistaken. You know, this is, the, as I say, with the colour call outs, as you work way right along, there's blacks, there's greys, there's reds, and there's off-white colour for the interior. Obviously, these are the brass shells, but they only give you three. But obviously, the rest of them probably plastic and you have to paint them um, 
Hence why I bought more more brush shells. So I might stick most of these in there. It all depends. I don't know yet. Um, but this is the basic layout of basic colours. So they're calling out for the whole front section to be red, floor to be black, the walls to be white. And now you've got your colour call outs. This is the one 1945 Eastern Front, winter, base colour, Dunkel Gelp, um, which is the yellow. And then it's the whitewash over the top. That's the one with the side skirts as well and side armour. This one doesn't have side armour. This one is spring 1945 in Germany, so this is towards the end of the war, probably like Berlin and stuff. Um, camouflage version, Dunkel Gelb yellow, the, the German brown and, and the German green colours. They are calling up for ammo by MIG colours, I don't use those, I use Tamir and stuff and AK. Uh, this is one here again. This is September '44, uh, Nor New Zealand. Sorry, not New Zealand, Norway. Uh, camouflage version again: brown, green, and yellow, standard colours. Uh, this one here, un unidentified unit. So '44. So I don't like when they do that when they don't know what the vehicle is but again it's just basic three colours the same I, I only go for proper versions not un unidentified tanks this one here is a, a real tank from Russia again Eastern Front 45 but it's just a standard yellow easy paint job but again it's, it's too boring I, I, I like the camouflage versions and that's the back of the kit. So now we're going to look at plastic. So I'm going to go straight off the top in no particular order. So this section here, this is just a little tab. So here are the three, three figures. There is a couple more. Again, I, I say these are border models, own branded figures. They are plastic. So. Again, nicely detailed. We have these locating tabs for your legs and stuff and your arms. For plastic figures, I think that's pretty pretty good. There's a couple of flash points around certain parts of the joints, but that's no problem. You are seen to find that with all the manufacturers, even Tamir figures that can be a little bit flashy and just a little bit of swipe. I'm not a figure painter. But I am learning to do figures with my tanks. I think it gives it a little bit more life to the vehicle. We have another tank crew member down here. Here are your jerry cans. This is all that stowage. So you've got your boxes, uh, jerry cans. Sorry, not jerry cans, the, um, the barrels. These are slightly smaller. But this is stowage, bags. This is a tarp you have to make up. Um, bits of wood and logs. Um, this is a cover that goes over your main gun. It would have been slow moulded to get that shape. It would have come through the front here. That's nicely done. This is the uh, basic extras. Here's the other casemate piece, which has actually come off. No, not a problem. Which would have been here. Now we have here is your plastic battle, but there is a metal one. I do know that. More detail parts. This is part of your turret. I do noticed parts you need for all of the gun assemblies all on this sprue, so you haven't got to go hunting for it, which is a nice touch. Here are those shells for inside the tank. Obviously you're going to want to paint them. Or you can go down like I've done and buy brass ones. Um, so this is nicely done. These are the storage boxes which don't have shells in them. You just put the uh, Fellowich 
ends on so it looks like there's shells in there so yeah nicely done nicely done detail let's have a closer look at certain parts parts of your gun here's the barrel one piece but as I say there is a metal one in the kit So now this is part of the superstructure. So this is the sides and the back, and then there's obviously an another plate. These are structural parts. Here's your radios down the side here and here. This is part of the uh, commander's hatch. Here are those weapons like the uh, MG40. Mm, not sure what these are. There's the uh, binoculars down the bottom there. So nicely done. Weapons. A couple of tools. Here are those radios painted, dry brushed, weathered. Be nicely done. There's those binoculars. There shouldn't be much left over once you've done the kit anyway. You do get this piece on the end, is the engine deck I think, if I remember correctly. Here's a part of the back plate of the superstructure. This is where your weapons are being attached to. This is the outer side. A couple of drive sprockets, but there's only one side. The other end must be somewhere else. A different sprue these are for your hanging parts for your the thing to hang down the side that uh, extra armor this is a lot of fine detail stuff so just be careful taking these parts off the sprue here's that mg um machine gun is it 60 i'm not sure here's the internal back plate wheels, uh, the drive sprockets even, so nicely done. We have this sprue here, this is the internals as well, this is the transmission parts. All of this is part of your brake assembly, I do remember seeing this. Again it's all on one sprue, you haven't got to go searching for it. Two big gaps here though, so there must have been Something going in there at a later date or maybe, I'm not sure. So here are those details. The brakes. Parts of your brake. Very small parts up here. This is part of the transmission section I believe. Again. All nicely done. Once it's painted, washed and weathered, it should come out nicely. So this section here is the uh, lower floor. Um, we've got a couple of ejector pins here to take care of. They just break off. They're going to need sanding. There's a couple of ejector pins inside here. Hopefully there's a couple of parts and torsion bars. Hopefully cross over those. So they're quite shallow and they're quite flush, so it shouldn't take too much. Your fenders, so this is your inside of the tank, and then the outside version of it. These are the outside vendors, and inside, again, jet to pins. Inside and outside sections, and obviously exactly the same on the other side outside and inside nicely done we see it's sprues not bent out of shape these are those framing for those uh, side skirts to hang off and it's molded to that shape of the tank so it goes long and, and hang around the back So this sprue here contains all your tools, 
and a couple of floor pans and floor parts so this is part of the floor and the rest of it's all tools so again just be careful taking these tools off so you don't break them I have tons of spare tools wire cutters, crowbar, giant hammers, here's part of your jack, it has to be built up, more tool assembly at the top, this is more flooring, it's diamond plated, it's very fine, I do like that, pretty cool. So tanks like this before interiors are ideal for dioramas and stuff like that um, and this this is a, a little bit tricky to display them so you can see everything. Um, upper superstructure, this is where the commander's hatch will be. This is a back plate, detail parts. Here are your exhaust parts. That's no different from any other manufacturer they do, there's always the same way. There is two, two types actually funny enough, I don't remember seeing that. These I don't remember. Can't remember what they are. They might be those little wheels. Is it the guide 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 wheels? Um I'm not sure if these tires have rubber tires or are they steel wheels. So what we're we looking at here. So we have fuel tanks, the fans, radiators here and here. All the plumbing we've got structural parts here this is all plumbing up here and then it goes structural and then it goes fuel tanks and radiator assembly so again most of this is going to be all the parts that you need for that one area so this is that superstructure it even has the holes drilled out and they do that for a safe weight on parts this is all those plumbing parts again just be careful taking them off the sprue. The last thing you want to do is be gluing them back together. Here are those radi radiators. So painted, black washing those vents is going to come out nicely. So I so imagine they'll be black and then if you dry brush them a little bit of silver, I think that's going to look nice. Detail on those fuel tanks, the fans. So we're almost there, two sprues left, this one and the wheels and tracks. So there is a lot of plastic in this, so it's going to be a lengthy build, it's not your typical tank. This looks like engine parts to me. Um, and then again there's another big gap here. So this what looks like part of the engine block. The uh, Either the top or the bottom, front and rear, another side. Detail parts, this the front and rear of the engine block again as well. Not sure what these circle parts are for, I can't remember. They could be the uh, belts, actually, come to think of it now, even these parts could be belts. We have these little pieces, little round pieces. So that's nicely done. The last two sprues in this one are exactly the same. These are going to be your wheels and tracks. And I have noticed there's a couple of more tools on this one, so they're probably either spares or just in case you lose them or break them. Torsion bars are on here as well. This is a very large sprue, you can just about get it in frame. Uh, so we have those covers for the engine. This is little detailed parts for suspension by the looks of things. This is the covers, a couple of tools like a spade and um, wire cutters. These are your road wheels, they are rubbered version, so I was correct, I weren't too sure. More dry sprockets, so there is some 
different ones to the other side. So there must be some differences. I didn't see that in instructions. These are your tracks. So you have length and links. So these links that go around the dry sprocket and whatever. And if you look at the way they've done it, it's got that sag in the track as well. Which is nicely done. Torsion bars. As I say, full length because it is an interior version. They probably will work as well. So here is the detail for the track parts. Um, and if you look on this side, the guide horns are already moulded in as well. So quite a simple way. There's extra free shells. Um, and then more of those little wheels. Then you've got that dry sprocket and that dry sprocket. So there are, see there's two different types. Again, I didn't notice that. The wheels are pretty standard. It does say, does it say continental on there? I'm not sure. I can't really see that. So it's nicely done. And then those sections there, uh, it's slide molded for your cable to go into. And the last piece is, <clears throat> this is that badge. And it, like I say, it is a replica one. Um, they come in two styles during the war, silver and bronze. Um, it was given to tank crew members that were participated in battles uh, for tank crew members so they were very common and given out a hell of a lot because obviously they had tons of tanks and they had a lot of battles and stuff so it's a standard tank badge as I say it's not real it's a replica and uh, I think they've done a pretty good job of it and uh, I do like collecting badges and stuff I would like some real ones, but these ones are more than uh, sufficient to me because I, I just like left them anyway. It's a nice touch. Now in here is all your extras. You've got your featherweight parts, markings, there is the metal barrel, and then there's those brass shells. You do get some copper cable. Um, Take a look at this actually. So here's that brass barrel. Sorry, not brass barrel, the um, main barrel of the tank. It does have a notch in it so it slots into your, your piece. So that's nicely done. Here are those extra shells. You get three of those plus plastic. Standard decals. I just imagine most of these are for your shells. Basic markings for the tank. That's why I like doing armor because if you're not a fan of massive decals, you haven't got to worry about it. These are the back plates for your shells because these these ones here don't have anything on them. And then the actual photo etch itself, again it's very shiny, it has a sticky film to it. So this is that extra armour plating, and this is all detail parts for your tank, and there are your grills. And you do get a bit of cable, but I'm going to say I'm going to swap mine out, I could use that for something else. And there is a correction sheet. Um, so there's an issue with the wheels, just pay attention, part of the engine, the tracks, and <clears throat> clump of plumbing parts. So that's nice that they've, they've found the issues and they've corrected it. Obviously later versions, uh, before they print the uh, instructions, they probably, this won't be needed, but the early version will be. So there you are folks. So there you are my friends, another kit from Border Models. 
Uh, beautiful kit as always, nicely detailed. As I say, this is the four interior version. You get the crew and you get the bonuses. Yeah, so I, I do like the uh, tank from Border Models. Um, I'm not a massive fan of interior kits because they take a long time to do. I only have two of them at the moment. Um, I have the um, Stug, as you see here, and also I have a uh, Panzer uh, Panther. Um, but yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.